Be ready to start this. Oh, I'm All ready. Right. I'm pumped up, horny. <laughs> Got the fucking. Sorry. All right. Colby, go ahead and take it away. Forgot. No, you, you said start. you wanted to start. What? <laughs> you literally texted no. me and said, I want to take this today. No, I said I wanted to start off. Uh, I wanted the first. Okay, question. okay. Well, oh, okay. No. You, you do the introduction and all that shit. I'm bad at all this right. stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone, welcome to episode, what are we, nine of the Three Piece yeah. Podcast with Kevy. I'm going to have a full, proper introduction on the YouTube and the podcast on all the different platforms, but Kevy, man, how you doing today? I'm chilling, <laughs> Yeah! I'm fucking <laughs> tired. I'm tired right now. Yeah, you were up last night playing what? Fast food? What? How are you? Asmophobia, bro. That game is... Wow. wow. What is it about? That game has me in another dimension. It's like... It's like a horror survival oh, okay. game. Like you're a ghost hunter, like Ghost Avengers. It's pretty lit. Yeah, sure. It's better in Modern Warfare. <laughs> that's on. That's on fast. Did you play Modern Warfare? I did in the beginning. Okay. Like, so like I was on a team like full of friends, and then like I moved to South Carolina, so like I was kind of fucked. Like I had two. I think by Minnesota I had like almost two, three thousand points, and then like I just stopped playing. Why'd you stop? I had to move. Like, I moved to South Carolina from New York because everyone here, I think we've all met at like locals and shit. Except for Trip, I think. But like, yeah, I was moving in with my fiance down here and we didn't have internet at first. So I was like, yeah, this is chalked. Yeah. This is chalked. I don't know. So were you sitting there during your off time, like, I want to come back to it? Or were you just you enjoying your time well, and trying to live? So like, it was like a, it was like a crossroads for me for a while. That's why I made that like, it's time video because like i got to the point where i didn't want to compete anymore but then like i would play eights here and there with friends because people kept pushing me to come back and play and then like i would be like i just gunned this guy shit he's been playing all year and he's got a lot of points like should i just come back like i got stuck in that phase where i'm like do i want to come back and dedicate to this or do i want to just be full entertainer because it's like my streams took off like for a few months and then i just stopped doing that but you can do both <sighs> oh yeah that that's the thing too is like i want to do both because I think I watched your last episode, or the one with radio, mm -hmm. and like a lot of AMs aren't creating content at all. Like it's that's the I whole reason, bro. I, I saw that big gap. I was like, bro, two things I've been thinking about the last year and a half. Put them together, and boom, I, I've been going with it. And every day, I just get another yeah, like, supporter, and everyone's like, keep going, whatever. So it's like, if I'm getting this kind of support just off the rip, like other people could just doing other stuff. Oh, yeah. It's like, I'm doing something. Well, you guys are killing it with the podcast. Like, the production's fucking, like, some hitch or ride shit. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I know that's what it's so I'm much. Trying. But it's, like, good I'm production. Trying. Like, thank you, bro. I appreciate well, you guys' production is really I appreciate good. appreciate it. I spent, like, 40 bucks on this over. <laughs> I, was, I was about to spend another 25 just to get the one so you and Scuff could come on together. But I was like, oh, I couldn't dude, spend twenty five dollars oh, on one screen. Graphic designers or scam artists? Uh, I really, I, yeah, like it, like it's, it's easy bad. stuff, but oh, it's, don't even get me started yeah. on that, man. Oh no, get started on it. Bro, get started on, on, on it. On like on like actual startup shit, shit, like not related to COD at all, bro. They'd be paying like ten k, twenty k just for like easy yes, ass shit. Like bro. I'm telling you, shit that you can do in Photoshop. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They put yeah, that. No. They'd be finessing. That's the same thing with video editing. I've gotten paid some buku money for editing the easiest things. That literally took me like twenty seconds. People just don't have the time to do it. I use Premiere. Yeah, you can learn it yeah, a week. No, exactly. Yeah. I, I use Premiere, but no, hundred percent. Because like you can literally just drop the video, like the clips, and it literally does the transition for oh. itself. I'm like, yeah, what? the way things are nowadays, it's, it's like you can just search free transitions, and it's just boom, boom, boom. You can either get it for free, or it's just drag and drop. It's super easy, and you can pretty much find a preset yeah. for anything. And if you don't find a preset, oh, you figure out how to do that thing, and then you make that into a preset. So from later on, you just have to drag and drop. It's like video editing is the easiest thing, and it's super underrated, like in the way of complication like people just really over yeah. it but people are lazy too yeah. That's oh, yeah. Thing. yeah no for sure but colby what did you uh want to go ahead and go on oh right. god the first day of the beta i heard skill base i haven't played it yet because i'm going out of town so i didn't bother i gave my code away uh i heard skill base matchmaking is still atrocious um oh, i saw liam complain about it Literally my entire timeline is skill based matchmaking and flashes. Mm. <laughs> uh so I was I was curious what you I was curious Kevin what your old stand on that uh thing is because I feel like you have 
part of it is from our like competitive players' perspectives, we're like after like a long day of scrims, we just want to go, like not try and just shit on kids. That's yeah. Just what we can do we can lay back and our laid back is most kids like Guard. top yeah. um but then when you look at it from maybe a newer player's perspective of you want to get on and just have fun kind of like we do but you're not as good you're getting shit on by guys who are going in and they're not trying in their eyes but to your eyes they're lords so i was just curious yeah. what you that was. so i mean so what I've heard from this beta right now, from today, because I'm already, like, maxed out because I've just been fucking grinding it. But, like, I guess they did skill base off the alpha, so your stats off the alpha carried over to the beta Still is what right. I'm being told. Which, because I was playing, like, I literally just hopped on, and, dude, I was losing full. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I, I was calling the game dog shit. Like, I was already pissed at the game. Like, I was like, I have no attachments. These guys have stocked out Uzi, stocked out XMRs, yeah. or XMRs, XM4s, and all that shit. And I'm like... What are we doing? Like, I had to literally grab my whole squad for Cold War to come play just to have, like, a decent game, like, to do good. Like, I mean, I could be dog shit, or, like, like you said, for the, newer, for the newer players, for the newer players, I could see it. But for, like, people like us, like, they should, I don't know, I think they should just make a ranked playlist. Well, they, if you yeah, want to get better, put it there. But, like, pubs, just leave it how it's well, been. Well, they like, had it, admitted that there is a ranked system in the full game. It's just not in the beta. Yeah. So, obviously, like, with you, you, if you think that they've taken all the criticism that they have and made these many changes, and they're going to add a rank play and not change the skill-based matchmaking, like, someone's got to be on fucking coke. Oh, yeah, because, like... I don't know, like, look at Black Ops 2. Perfect. Like, I'm just gonna go to, like, all-time favorite. Everyone's. They fucking, like, the way they made that game, they made it on accident. That's how good it was. Like, they didn't mean to make League yep. play that good. They didn't mean to make pubs that good. They didn't mean, the game was fun. They're trying way too hard to cater to, like, a Fortnite audience. And, like, yeah. look at Warzone. I mean, I, I mess with Warzone. Warzone's pretty good. I mean, I hate it, though, because it's, like, bringing this new audience that doesn't know COD. Yeah. Like, we know COD. Like, yeah. like, like, back in the day, like, if you were shit, Grind, grind, grind until you got better. You want, like, if you're, like, like, you're new to the game, right? You're going up against someone that's been grinding. Like, say they're playing one of, like, a competitive player. And he's gunning your shit and you're getting smoked. Some people like to get better. Like, they're like, I want to be like that guy. Mm -hmm. I want to be like Scump. I want to be like Formal. They're just destroying me in these pubs. And then there's, like, kids that want to save. Uh, I, I, never, <laughs> mind. Never, mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. So, do you think, oh, yeah. um, do you think maybe... It could be almost like a generational thing like i think it's very oh. a, a common topic that like the generation growing up now is maybe softer as people will say and so maybe like when we were growing up we wanted to get better and now this generation yeah. just wants everything easy um our generation's soft too but so i think our generation yeah like you said i think our generation's soft too i mean a little bit older than you guys but like still in the same we're category still in the same yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but like i don't know if, i think it's like on the person i think like it you can't like categorize the whole generation because i know there's kids like my little sister she plays cod and she's trying to gun for my shit and i'm like yo but then there's kids that are like literally shaking when they play like good players so i think it's based on the person like i don't know if it's like how they're raised how they play the game i don't i don't know i just think it's something like psych not psychologically but like something with the person themselves you know like something inner with them like we're competitors we want like we'll talk shit to each other like we're gonna gun for throats like we're coming we're coming oh. And then there's kids where like kind of like the. I actually have a perfect response just, to that. Is today? Sorry to cut you off, but I was listening to this episode or not this episode, this video, and they were talking about gaming psychology and how there's like a peak anxiety level that video games strive for. So it's like it pushes your natural body instincts into an anxiety state to the point that you're hyper focused and you you're aware of something is always on your toes like when you're playing call of duty you're always like someone's coming over there someone's going over there you don't realize it but you're anxious that's just how the human body mm -hmm. works so uh, a lot of people you know it, if you're already anxious to begin with and then you have that intended it anxious worse, yeah. it gets worse obviously so what are some ways mm -hmm. i know you were talking about it the other day and Gosh. nobody in the in the discord paid any attention to it but i heard it and i wanted to bring it up you said the other day you were like oh, yeah. yeah man i got really bad anxiety just no one knows about it so what are some ways that anxiety personally has affected you in game and maybe not even okay. just in game but in the gaming realm has it held you back at all has it helped you what ways have you experienced mm -hmm. it so anxiety um 
I notice it more online, like, than I do on land, which is weird. It's so weird for me because, like, when I first went to lands, I wouldn't sleep. Like, when I first went to NJ, my first event, I partied all night in the hotel room and didn't even go to sleep. Like, I was just, it, my anxiety doesn't let me sleep. And, in, like, in-game, I'll notice it because I'll look at the names we're playing, which is, like, a big no-no. Yes. Like, you're supposed to play everyone, like, who gives a fuck? Like, who are these kids? Like, who cares? But me, I kind of get in my head, and I do it with everything in life. It's my anxiety controlling. And uh, a lot of people don't pick up on it because I put it on an act. Like, I'm this big confidence guy. And it's always been because of, like, the people that supported us when we competed, like, that in-control mm -hmm. team. That would help me cover up my anxiety and give me that confidence I needed. Mm -hmm. But, like, when it comes to the game, like, I don't say it to, like, discourage my teammates. But, like, I'm fucking anxious. Like, I'm anxious right now. And, like, we're just having a conversation. Hey. It's it's to the extreme. Yeah. I mean, everybody gets anxious to their certain it's, points. And have you communicated? Oh, yeah. Obviously, you said your team, like you talked to them. But in what ways have you communicated to your team that the anxiety is going to affect maybe like how you are as a teammate? Um, if if that changes any way that you go about your day to day or however that goes, or how has your team also helped with your anxiety? Have they catered to you, or have they been like, shut up, bitch, like get better, like? Yeah. So, like, previous teams, I haven't really talked about it because, like, everyone's kind of got that chip mm -hmm. on their shoulder because, like, I've, I've played, like, you know, the, and everyone here knows the NJ scene. Everyone's got a chip on their yeah. shoulder. Like, even kids that haven't made top 10 in fucking 10 years. Mm -hmm. But, like, like, these guys are kind of, like, I didn't pay attention to it more. My girlfriend actually, paid, like, focused on it more than I did. I kind of ignored yeah. it. And she's like, you have extreme anxiety. Like, you got to get that looked at. And we're trying to nip it in the bud before the next season. And I brought it up to Swan, who's our coach. And he was just like, what we're going to do next year, if you're having a bad day, we're just going to call it a day. Like, we're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. We're going to let your mental... Because, like, at the end of the day, like, your mental and health is what carries yep. you on, you know? Yeah. If, you're, if you're not feeling good, or if your head's fucked, like, say you get cheated on or something, your head's fucked. You're not shooting straight. Like, you're not even thinking about the game. Like, you're half-assing it, not giving yeah. it 100%. No. And... And so we're trying to nip it in the bud before it gets worse. No, so no, 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 no. I, I was saying, yeah. Yeah, no, I was agreeing with you. But no, 100%. I, there, there definitely needs to be that preparation beforehand rather than trying to catch it in the midst. And I don't know if you watched my most recent video about burnout. I think that that could help you a lot also because of anxiety. You have kind of like, you have this heightened pressure on yourself to perform. And if you do underperform, mm -hmm. it really, you feel bad about yourself. Obviously, everybody deals with that, you know? Everybody's hard on themselves, and I'm sure Colby can yeah. definitely touch on this to a great extent. But it's like, so what ways are you going to try to build that balance before going into Cold War that, like I said, you can't take those off days as consistently, but you have to try to maybe manipulate yeah. your the days that you do compete in a way that it is more balanced and it, it is better for you. So what are some ways, like you said, that yeah. you're trying to build uh, that bite, bite the nip or whatever beforehand? Yeah, nip yeah. in the bud. Yeah, we're trying. So like one of them is like focusing on sleeping. Yeah. And like we have like this, I don't know yeah. what it's called. She bought it. It's like an air diffuser. Central I don't know. Oil, humidifier. I don't know yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. So that like when I go to sleep, that shit's going off. So like it calms me at night. And then like the next day I wake up. Bro, let me good. recommend like, listening to, to thunderstorm or like rain sounds on your TV in your room. Yeah. Yes, bro. Ah, yeah, oh, bro, I got them mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, so you, bro, any any background noise, though, key that'd be making you feel like at home. Like I'm telling you, like I, I use that shit all. Like okay, so like I have an AC in my room, right, and it's loud, but it's like white noise mm -hmm. in the background. I'm telling you, bro, it makes me sleep like a rock because like oh, yeah. I just feel like something's going on in the background, and I'm just sitting there under my sheets, like just chilling. Like, yeah. That's another thing too is I always went, when I lived in New York by myself, all we do is sleep with the fan mm -hmm. on i would have to have the fan on for that white noise and like i hate being hot when i'm yeah. sleeping bro and then like she doesn't like the fans so she complains about it, so the fans out here now but like that i think that could be That's another nice. reason is like my sleep is kind of off centered to what i'm used mm -hmm. to you know what i'm saying like i've been doing it for so many years that now i don't have it maybe there's that was my crush yeah. no you know? sleep is definitely super important bro. i don't know if you really look into it and I definitely would recommend it if you don't just sit there in your free time watch videos on like the importance of sleep man the science of sleep is oh, just yeah. insane man your body is doing oh, so yeah. much for itself when you're sleeping that you don't even realize and if you neglect that and you think like okay i'm just gonna get four hours of sleep today because fuck it we grind 
like yeah sure it's cool like you sacrifice you got to make sacrifices but sleep isn't what you should be sacrificing oh 100%. yeah you're supposed to i guess they're saying doctors recommend you're supposed to sleep like nine to eleven hours a night yeah it, i'm like bro i'm only getting like four <laughs> no for the longest time i felt that i was better off with like four to six all through like middle school and high school but i was also on adderall so i mean yeah. it's a lot easier for <laughs> me like yeah how how long do you actually sleep now? Eight. Like, like genuinely. Eight? Mm. I sleep normally six to seven. If I sleep more than eight, I wake up mm -hmm. tired. On a good day, maybe seven. And that's like a slug in day. Usually it's like five. I'm telling you, like my I've always had like such a good internal clock. Like, um I got six hours today and that's like not a lot. You know what I mean? But like on a good night, like nine is when I feel like perfect for me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But I probably get like eight usually. See, okay. that's where the situational or like the personal okay. awareness really comes in is like if you really know your yeah. like what you're supposed to be doing to play at your optimal peak performance levels, like get down to a time where like, you know, OK, I've been awake for this many hours. I'm going to start feeling drained at X time. If I'm playing past X time, I'm going to be getting fried. So why don't we take that time to watch VODs and actually learn something because your brain absorbs more before you go to sleep, before you're getting ready. That's why people read books in bed, etc. So it's like, why not do that education right before you get off? And then you're also not, you know, getting fucking molly whopped. So it's like, at the very end of the night, you're being productive with your time. I think that that mm -hmm. personal and awareness, I, yeah, no, oh, go ahead. No, you're, my, you're yeah, going, you're going, yeah, I'm chill. Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. listening, I was like, wait. So it's like, I was like, I didn't really notice it when I was yeah. younger. But like, as you get older, you're like, what the fuck am I going through? Mm -hmm. you know? Like, am I like, am I good? Am I good, bro? Yeah. Like, when you get out into the real world and like you get older, you're like, you start thinking about mm -hmm. shit. And I don't know if it's like the brain like doing its yeah. thing. I don't know if it's a sign of depression. I don't know what it is. But like, like you were saying, like if you're not like, when I used to get off from scrims back in like IW and like mm -hmm. World War Two and all that, like I would just get on and like YouTube and just like watch NBA videos or like some other. I wasn't thinking about it, but now I'm like watching shit on the human mm -hmm. body, like how to make like your body more productive and healthier yeah instead of just waking up and chugging like the game feel every fucking hey bro time. let me i'm gonna link you a couple of youtube channels after this that i want you to start looking into it's a couple of my personal inspirations and why i started all this youtube podcast whole shit and literally right after i graduated high school the first thing i did on my trip or on my plane to saint martin for my senior week i was reading a personal development book and every day since then i've been doing some kind of personal development stuff because i think it's obviously very important to focus on who you are and trying to become who you want to become and i think that's one of the biggest things mm -hmm, with this yeah. call of duty thing too it's like obviously everybody starts at zero and if you want to get to 100 you have to work to get to 100 and i think that's one of the the biggest things that people kind of neglect and like you were saying you know you just kind of get on play your scrims watch your youtube or whatever and a lot of people aren't taking that time to make that one percent change every day if you really just sit down and make like i said one percent change every day you're going to be doing so much more rather than like you're saying sit down watch that youtube video or whatever like just because you're playing doesn't mean you're playing and like getting better you have to use your time efficiently and that's what i'm trying to push with all this is everybody just use your time more efficiently and you can play a lot less and get a lot better in that shorter time oh yeah rather than playing those oh, yeah. 12 16 it hours of just watching youtube videos all day I've always been a believer on it's not how many hours you put in, it's yep. the productivity you put mm -hmm. into it. Like, I remember teams would scrim fucking 10 hours a day. We'd only scrim four, yeah. and we'd be better because we're playing better teams. We're not playing, like, a bunch of ram bobs and just getting our egos mm -hmm. up. I mean, it is good to play shit teams sometimes to get your comp. Like, if you're in a, if you're in a rock in a hard place as yeah. a team, it's good to just play some shitters real quick, just get that confidence back up and get you back on the right track. But, like, for product, produ wow, productivity... Yeah. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's better to play the better teams, mm -hmm. like, 100%. Like, not, oh, I'm playing 10 hours a day. No, bro. Like, yeah. play something that matters mm -hmm. and then, then come talk. And, like, the out of, like, uh, the out of scrim stuff, too. Like, how you're dealing with that and, like, how focused everyone is on not just your individual play, but, like, your team play as well. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I think 100%. that's really important. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just curious now because uh, we, we asked Kev a little bit about, like, how he handled, uh, I guess, stress and anxiety in and out of game. I'm actually curious because I think uh, Kev would benefit. And I think we'd all benefit on this. Uh, maybe we, the rest of us, could shed some light on how we handle our own individual stress oh. that's coming. God, hundred uh, percent. Everyone has a story. Yeah. So, I'm, Cole, you want to go first? Uh, we can start. With oh, you okay. Now. Okay. Fine. I'll go first. No, you got it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll start with the host. Okay. We'll with the host. Okay. <laughs> so, um, for the longest <laughs> time, I, 
You know, I like I've always had a hard time with staying focused because obviously with my ADHD, I kind of scatter thought, whatever little things. Uh, it's like if we were at LAN or something and something was somebody was standing up in the background, I was looking away from my screen to look at that. So I would lose composure. Oh. Yeah, right? Like little things like that, bro. If I'm playing and I see a bird fly by my window, like I'm looking. Like I can't help it. So like I lose fucking composure. I get so mad. And then I get so anxious like how I'm playing that people are going to sit there and like, damn, John, like you're getting shit on. Like when we were playing World War II, bro, I was getting smoked. Oh, buddy. Oh, dude. And and it was like when I get when I'm getting shit on, bro, I'm just like I'm not there and I'm just looking around my room. I'm like, bro, what do I got to look at that's going to make me better? I just sit here and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I got to do something, bro. Like, where am I going? I just get so, so stuck. So how do you handle that's, where, that? that's where I'm going with this. <laughs> that's, where, <laughs> that's where I'm going with it. No, so the thing that's really helped me, I dealt with this for a long time and I've just recently started to get better at it is uh, I've been meditating a lot. So that I really didn't think about how much that would help me and in game, you know, I knew it would help me a lot as a person, but I didn't really think about the call of duty effects that it's had. And I've noticed a lot that my patience has helped. So like if I'm preaming something, I'll, I don't twitch, you know, when you're meditating, if you follow like a guide or something, it's going to tell you like, uh, you feel that twitch in your leg, like don't touch it. Like it will subside if you just focus on what is that task, like focus on your breath or whatever. If you're just focusing on that task right in front of you that itch is going away so i've kind of gotten out of that looking away from it kind of thing and the anxiety of that has gone away but the meditation is really like the biggest thing that's helped me because it's just keeping myself focused and keeping myself alert on the present moment rather than looking around and scatterbrain i'm like oh fuck bro what is going on i'm just i take that sec i take that deep breath and i'm straight but you know it's easier said than done so colby what are you doing I was just gonna put in the fact that uh, going off of John and eight, I think his hard point KD is probably like uh, point six, point rough. three, point three. Uh, Let me tell you, it's pretty rough. <laughs> but my S and D, baby, I got a three point oh. Let me tell you. He's yeah, in that M1903. Ah, nasty. I, I hit like a triple uh, snipe up. through the smoke as he was dolphin diving I mean, last too, night, man. baby. Fades up. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't really. I like I feel like I don't really struggle with much anxiety, but also as you guys as Liam and John have probably learned over time of the podcast, I'm kind of a psychopath when it comes to how I am mentally. Uh, Look, you remind me of Ozzy Osbourne sometimes. I don't know like what it is. Yeah, you're a little scary sometimes. You know, you got vampires oh, in your closet. Yeah, you mad like, dress shit. Yo, I'm um, an alcohol and you never know. <laughs> but like we were talking about uh, on the last podcast, we were talking about burnout. So like I don't want really to get burned out. It's always something else that makes me quit, but it's not going to be the game. And uh, it also talked on the last podcast, like it comes like the mental game. Like nobody's going to take me out of my headspace. Like nobody's going to be able to get into my head, but I will sit there and I will dig myself a hole and throw myself in it until I get better. Oh, yeah. um, I think my biggest problem right now in terms of like my perfectionist mindset of like always like striving to be perfect and Swan's trying to help me with it right now. Um, like for example, he said my, yeah, he said my biggest Sorry. problem right now. He said my, my biggest problem right now in World War II is not holding lanes long enough. Man. or I'm holding them for too long. Like there's no middle mm. ground. Um, I was telling him, I was like, could that be like I'm trying to play so perfect that my timings are off? And he's like, absolutely. He's like, that's definitely what it is. Like mm -hmm. you just need to stop like trying to play perfect and just play the game. And like in my head, I'm like, well, I'm not playing perfect. Like, shit. See, man, I think there. Uh, I, I, I want to cut you off at that point, and you can continue after this. But I think there's definitely a big disconnect in the way of like you know there is a, a fundamental way to play Call of Duty. Obviously, everybody knows that. But it, you, there's so many different ways to play Call of Duty. I, I don't know if. I want to say perfect. I, can, I don't know if perfect uh, is possible speak. because so I many people speak. can. Yeah, and Dude, no, 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 I'm telling you right now. I could, I could. Okay, speak. Lectures, okay, lead. Lecture. Whole lecture. Class lecture. About that, bro. Go ahead. No, I want Kobe yeah, to finish. Okay. And I okay. can go back. Okay. I can yeah, go back. And, I want, I want okay. Kobe to finish. And it's, well, it's like it's I had some. Ah, Kevin. Yeah. We we good. 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 <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even said something to me that was crazy. Right, well, let me get this off then. Like I understand there is no perfect way, yeah. but it's just uh, it's just the way I am with everything. Mm -hmm um like when it comes to, like lifting like i have to have perfect form otherwise i'll sit there and i'll destroy right. myself mentally 
lacrosse or even baseball or football, basketball, like whatever sport I'm playing. Like if I'm not, I'm not doing perfect, then it's going to throw me off. And um, I don't know. I mean, composure is not a big problem for me. Anxiety, it used to be, but that was more like when I was an underage kid and you finally get to play like, um, like I remember like an IW, I played like against Max. I remember seeing Lights Fire and I'm like, oh, dude, I think this, like I heard this guy's really good. We lost like six one or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Got> body bag. <laughs> <laughs> Zip them up. But then, but then like you take him to now, for example, like we played in the uh, that AW tourney and like we played like Cheeto. I think it was Cheeto. Oh yeah. Cheeto Fuck Prodigy that guy. And two other guys, a bunch of AW grinders. And it's like mainly I know that, but at the same time, like I'm not worried about that. And I don't know if it's because I started playing with a lot more confidence recently. Um, I mean, here I am stepping up to Liam Sigma for 1v1 World War II challenge. Oh, that guy's a grinder. That guy's a grinder. Uh, so I don't know. Um, it is hot. It is hot. It is hot. Money, man. It is hot. God damn. It can be free money. What is that? I don't know. But when, it to... <laughs> when it comes to uh, when it comes to trying to get in, or when it comes to trying to fix that, I kind of just play through it and kind of get used to it i guess so all right kevin what were you thinking kev- yeah oh so i have something really back to that <laughs> whole i think playing perfect shit okay. or whatever yeah, we were talking about, about that too, was yeah. i wrong yeah. was i wrong i was so at minnesota there's no way to play perfect in cod there's no, no way. way you won't do it damon yeah. so i was in the room with barlow i was getting hammered i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put it out there i was getting hammered and we were at Minnesota, and like I looked at him, and we were like, he was, he's cool as shit, bro. He'll talk hard with anybody. He don't care. And he just met me that day. And he was just like, he's like, you're not going to win that. You, you can't. It's Call of Duty. It's not going to go 100% your way all the time. He's like, shit's going to happen. It's Call of Duty. He was like, you're going to get bullshit played. You can't play perfect. He said, the only way you're really playing perfect, and he was like, this is like some pub stomping shit, is if you're literally just hammering them right there in their spot they can't move that's the only way you're really playing perfect because because there's so many situations that you can't play 100 percent perfect in, in his opinion my I, I mean i looked at cod like you did colby where i was like dude like there's 100 percent. we got to be 100 percent. like shit's gonna happen it's not gonna always go perfect your way yeah just like everything everybody tries to play unpredictable like, I, to i don't know extent, if was gonna... but yeah no go ahead keep going oh, well what i was gonna say is that i oh, oh no. you, my, you yeah. something cool? I, 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 was I, mean, just, who was speaking, I was just going to say, like, again, like, I understand that. Like, I think I'm slowly starting to realize that, especially through these eights. Um, I feel like World War II is a really good example of core COD and, like, the more fundamental yeah. aspect. Um, Sigma loves World War II. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> uh, so, I mean, yeah, like, I, I understand it, and I think I'm finally starting to realize it more, so. All right, well, All right, well what, what I was going to say is that, uh, bro, I'm telling you, when I went through, like, a... Like I, I mean, I'm good mentally, but I like in S and D when I tried playing S and D in Bo4 in World War II, my brain was melting. Bro. <laughs> I was better than every kid in S and D scene. Like not every, but like mo- a lot of the kids, mm-hmm. I was just better than like raw talented wise. I was better than my respawn, bro. But I was losing the kids. Like they were good S and D kids. Like these are kids playing a hundred dollar challenge, man. And I played like fifty dollar challenge, seventy five dollar challenge, man. And I'm telling you, bro, like I was doing everything like perfectly, like textbook wise, but yeah. I just keep losing and losing six four, six five, like. Like, uh, it was just, like, the most ir- aggravating things because, like, I would, like, get, f- like, rounds because of, like, my gun skill and I was, like, outplaying them. But, like, I would just lose because, like, I was trying to play too perfectly. And, like, mm-hmm. not until I stepped away from COD, I was like, damn, like, I got to stop doing everything textbook. Like, I could read the game really well. I knew s and as well as literally any other S&D kid. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything I've seen all these top-tier S&D kids doing, like, it's the same shit that I would be thinking about doing, right? But then you see the kids like winning like S and E tourneys and stuff like that, and it's like, what's the difference between me and them? Like, I have as much t- raw talent, in my opinion, like when I played at my peak as like Illy or Simp. Like, I- I'd say they have a bit more than me, but like generally, I'm in that tier. Like, in my honest opinion, um, but why are they so much better than me? Why are they winning everything? You know what I mean? And I think now, I think they just like they did things like they understood that you can't play everything perfectly. And I was trying to do everything textbook, and they were willing to switch it up and do shit that like isn't unorthodox mm-hmm. like they weren't afraid of getting first blooded bro like i'm telling you i'll go in sd matches and this is like some trauma shit bro like i would play with snd kids in like 50 dollars wagers and get 
fucking yelled at for getting first blooded oh, yeah. over and over and over again, bro. So I'm telling you, if this goes to my gameplay right now, I never get first blooded ever. The only time I ever get first blooded is if I get like out snipe, which like, you know, it is what it is then, right? But Agreed. I'm telling you, like, in like four v four, two v two shit, like, be willing to like, like make that play. Like, you know, Zuma, Zuma is the most underrated player in the pro scene. Like when it comes to like and pre and Pristini, because they just go and like try to make a play. Do you know what I mean? Because they can win their teams rounds, uh, their team rounds. Or they can lose them, but like that's the type of player you have to be sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't like yeah. willing to do unorthodox shit like that. So, yeah, it, it's kind of like that. that. It's kind of like that fear, like when you first get into the scene, is like, oh my, like like stats wise, kind of you like you want to look the best in the lobby. And then like once you like you said, once you change the or- unorthodox and you would make a play or do a dirty play for the team to help you guys, you literally skyrocketed. Yeah, like yeah. I, I remember, I remember you you came up quick. You came up really quick in the scene. Yeah. I remember when you... I think I met you in BO3. I don't know if it was yeah, BO3 or AW. Yeah, you did. You fucking, like, the next year you took off IW... Like, you just skyrocketed. You, I remember yeah. you taking a little break, too. And uh, and then you skyrocketed. You became, like, a superstar of the local scene. Yeah. I always say, if Liam never gave it up, he, he would be <laughs> strived. Uh, I'm not saying that you're not anywhere now, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. But uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the fuck I was supposed to do in MW. Like, yeah, no, I mean, MSD, I guess. About. Here's the thing: like, I didn't find joy in throwing down racks like Scrappy's right now. Mm-hmm. Like, props to that kid, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, his stream is popping, man. He's known as that SNE kid. You know, he's a little bit of an iffy rep, rep here and there, but like, he's gonna get people to play with him that are good. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And like, uh, he's still my boy, but like, I just didn't find joy in stressing my life over playing best of three five hundred dollar wagers, man. Like, I'm telling mm-hmm. you, like. It was enough. It was it was fun to make two hundred a day. Like yeah. there were days where I'd go up two hundred dollars <throat> and I'd be dumb happy. But the next day I go down three hundred and I'd be like punching myself going to sleep because like I said, it's like back then like I tried to play so perfect mm-hmm. that like I was there, there was no consistent winning. It was like I was trading cash and it was just like it wasn't fun. So like mm-hmm. you know I just kind of called it quits because I was seventeen and I just had nothing to yeah. do. Local scene was dead. Yeah, so. local scene did die. It, it died quick. It's still died. dead. Yep. Uh, do you think it's ever coming back, Kevin? We've talked about it on here, but what do you think? Okay, so I did see you guys talk about that a little bit. I think it's done for right now. Mm-hmm. The only way is if there's a lot of unnecessary ego, especially with the NJ scene now. Like it's like getting top four back then was something. Mm-hmm. Getting top four now, you win a round or two in your top four. You had to make a fucking run, and you had to play. Who was it? Resent. Who was nasty? Mm-hmm. Resent. Gosh. You play Simp I two. Who else? There's another team. We were up there sometimes. Other times we got absolutely thrashed. Um, it definitely changed. I feel like the comp yeah. dipped in BO4. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the last time placings mattered were World War II, in mm-hmm. my honest opinion. It was three, like to World War II was so good. Like, oh, yeah. I, like you said, BO3, I think, was the when it was in its prime. BO3 yeah. was when it was in its yeah, prime. I agree. And then after that, it started dipping. Because we started getting some new names, and we were all like, the OGs were kind of just like, who the fuck is this? Who the fuck, <laughs> yeah, right? like, who the fuck am I losing to right now? Literally. And now I go on Twitter, and I see some of these, I'm not going to name names, because I'm not going to be that guy, but I see some of these NJ kids that were getting horked on back in the day, and now they're like somebody. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if they got better and we got worse. I don't know. We're old now, though, so I mean, probably. A little bit of everything. Yeah. But like Sigma said, that scene died quick. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. So... I, I want to see where I should take it. So what are you saying? You can take it anywhere you want, baby girl. Like when you talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> so. You uncomfortable? Whoa. Okay, so so actually that, that brings me into something is being comfortable in your game. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so being comfortable in game. What what things that you do that... If you if you're sitting there, you're like oh, fuck, bro. Like I'm just uncomfortable. Like I gotta do this or that. Is it like is it your vape? Do you have a candle? Like what superstitions do you have? Oh, like what is it? All right. So it used to be caffeine. I used to be like, yo, I'm not cracked. I can't play this <laughs> shit. Like I'm not playing. Get off. But now it's more like my vape's a crutch because I used to be a high head back in the day. I, I mean, I I kind of am now still, but like I've toned down a lot since I was younger. I used to meet like our ink team. <laughs> Like, me and Joe Reality used to go at it, bro. Like, we were about to swing, bro. I used to make fun of his mom. He called me, like, there was some shit that we can't say. But, like, yeah, it's mostly the bait, bro. Like, if I don't have nicotine in me, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm I'm having a bad day. I'm yelling at people. Like, it's back to Toxic Kev where he's just going at people's necks. And, like, 
I mean, there's two toxic chems, so never mind, really. <laughs> but, like, it's mostly the vape. And if I... I used to... I still do it now. I get internet in my head all the fucking time. All the time. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but it just gets in my head. And if I'm not killing fast and I'm dying fast, that throws my whole game off. That makes me uncomfortable. I like those games where I go in... And it's, it's, it's just me getting in my head. I get in my head a lot. But, like... Yeah, I'm just gonna go with the vape on this one. We're just gonna rock with the vape. That's my crutch to keep me in the game. <laughs> well, you were you were just saying that you get in your head a lot. So when you are in your head, and there's like, what separates when you're doing good versus you doing bad? Like, what is that deciding factor? Like, this is why I'm getting shit on because X, Y, Z, whatever. So it comes down to like, all right. So I think it's like a COD player thing, or it might just be me, and my fucking fucking attitude but like there's days where i'll be like i'm just getting outplayed like these guys are shitting on me or it's like this fucking host sucks like i used to do that a lot i used to be like this host is awful but um i mean what decides it for me mostly is just seeing what my teammates are doing on the map if my teammates are doing dumb shit i flip the fuck out like internally and that throws my whole game off and that's what we're trying to work on now going into this year is don't don't get so down on yourself if your teammates are making the wrong plays. Just try to help them mid-game hmm. and get them on the right track instead of just losing full and fucking your performance up. So do you feel you... that's always been a problem of mine? I've, I would. Oh shit! Yeah, you were What's you up? were literally just answering the question I was getting ready to <laughs> ask. I know. I was getting ready to say, do you find yourself so often comparing yourself to your teammates, and how does that affect your gameplay? You were pretty much tying that into what I was getting. So. So the, the team that, all right, so this is going back in the past. I used to compare myself a lot to my old team because yeah. I wasn't the best player on the team. And, like, I would always, that's where me and Joe really click a lot, me and Joe Reality, is because, like, we had that rival hmm. who wants to be better. Like, yeah. we would push each other to be better than the other. And then we would hear what people would say on Twitter and what people would say in Discord and, like, Skype, Skype back in the day. <sighs> Um, oh, yeah. Skype cod was different. Yeah, that was, those were the days. <laughs> Skype calls, Skype calls were back they in the were day. Crazy, but, like, they were crazy, relentless. I used to do some wild shit on Skype. Um, but that's that's really IPs what it is. Right. Oh, IPs did get pulled. Uh. I'm not gonna name names, but there was this one team in IW that used to pull everyone's IP. I'll say one of the kids because he doesn't play more. But that Detail kid oh, used detail, to pull everyone's bro. IP. I hated detail, yeah, bro. that oh, yeah that, that I eight nation man. team, bro. They used to flood my shit. They hated me in IW, oh, bro. but um, I don't really compare myself to my teammates now. I kind of just like, I'm at that point where like, I know people know my name. Like I know where I'm at. I'm not the best. Like I used, like I'm not as good as I used to be. And it's kind of just like trying to help the younger players out and try to encourage them to carry on them. Cause I only have a few, like, I don't know how much longer I got on this. I mean, I could be an entertainer, but like, how old are you? You're like, what? Like, 23? Uh, I, I, 23. 23. Even younger, like bro. Year, baby. No, Major Maniac's like, what, 30 something? Didn't Major Maniac like 32? No, nah, bro. No, no. He's like 20, 20 nah, 21. What? I, saw, I, saw, uh, I saw some meme that was like, my, he's my, the my, oldest my, player. Yeah, he's I saw some meme, bro. Oh, nah, yeah, nah, yeah. Yeah. They fucked that up. I did say that Minnesota. They fucked that up. Yeah, okay. Then it was Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, I always thought. Yeah, keep going. I was I was curious, Kev. You're speaking on that. Um. Let's say this, online and online. How did you handle one playing bad and two uh, losing? And was there like a recovery time? And if so, how long was it? So, like recovery time at the event, like as, we're... as in like mentally, mentally. Oh, mentally, okay. Like if you had a really bad series, like double neg, and it was like a big series, right? And you do you do bad and go to losers. Was it just chalk for the event, or like were you able to rebound and then the same online? I got the best event for you there on that one. This is going. I'm, I keep going back in the past because I haven't done nah, shit. And, like I haven't been to a, like a okay. local in a while. But Come like on, Bo3, we got knocked out first round. Like when it was me, Mike Radiant, Joe, and the Crips, we got knocked out by Mark Strat's team, who is Ryan DeGroot. Fucking, it was. <laughs> we lost. This. You played with him that year. You played with him that year. <laughs> we lost. Oh, Mister Three Cents, bro. Three. He was on two cents for a few. Oh my god. Kobe was three cents, right? How do you turn around, man? So we lost and lose winners round one to them, mm. and we lost like two fifty two forty nine. I fucked up and team killed in hill, and they got killed, and we lost the game two fifty two forty nine. So already I was just like, fuck! I just threw that map. Like I literally just lost the map. Like that's on me. And then then the next map we win S and D six five, or no, yeah yeah six five. And then they did uplink third map for some reason. I thought they would do S and D last, but they they were weird with it. But um, they did uplink and we lost. 
the fuck? We lost um, 9-7 in the uplink. So it was a close-ass series. And everyone looked at me like the bad guy because I team killed him through that first map. So automatically, if we lost that series, it was on me 100%. And I had that in my head. So I'm already like yeah. trying to clutch up. And I, I kind of dropped it going into the SD because I fried in the SD. And then the uplink, I was teed. And then, like, after that, we all went, we would always do this thing, like, the optic, how they would do, they would go in the fucking back and have that, like, little sewing circle and talk to each other. That was the recovery time. That's when we looked at each other, because we knew we were, that was the last time we were going to play with each other, because we all didn't like each other at that time. And we were just like, fuck it, bro, let's just play. Like, that's where I put in my head, and I looked at everyone at the event, I was like, I'm just playing at this point. I didn't care where we were, I didn't care if we lost, I didn't care if we won. We played and got top three. And I was just like, we went from losers round one to top three, and we lost to Kyle Volts in them, and uh, Silpy. And I was just like, and that's like, online mentally, I just have to go like, chill for like 10, 15 minutes, and I'm good, and I'm ready to play again and get better. Like, that's kind of how it is. I was, gotcha. I was about to say, so you're, I forgot where I was going. Um, you're good, I fucking just carried out a long ass story. <laughs> no, you're okay, because I was, right, I was adding on to the end of it. Um, you were saying that Fuck, bro, I just had a brain fart. Hold on, someone else take this so I can figure out where take I'm going one. with this. Give him an Addy. Give him yeah, get my fucking right, Addy, bro. Dog's barking. Dog's barking. You, you, you were talking about uh, kind of how, like, um, with BO3, like, after you kind of, like, I guess, like, costed that uh, hard point, right? It kind of stuck with you mentally. I know for oh, yeah. me personally, man, like, you know, on What's land, that? like, that shit sticks with you. Like, it, it oh, sticks yeah. with you. Like, genuinely, like, because, like, you know, I, for me personally, I'm able to handle it well. But like in the back of my mind, like for me at least, I'm like, okay, so I cost it first map. You're waiting to no see if so much about it. Like, I know what's gonna happen. Like people, because you know, at least my games, like everyone in the venue is watching my shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you I have, have the crowd scra screaming everybody, like at everybody. Yeah, you know what everyone I mean? watched the little guys scream. Yeah, I just had it in the we, oh, we we lit up the whole fucking place. Yeah, that shit was wild. But anyways, long story short, right? Um. There would be times, like especially towards the beginning of the event, like uh, when I like if it was like early, you know, no one's shots are warm, right? And I was awful when I was young at like playing not like cold. I was so bad, right? Um, so I just cost, and for me mentally, it was kind of hard to like, uh, like it's kind of hard to just I guess gain confidence in that SD. I would play passive and stuff like that. So, um, basically, what I'm trying to ask is for you personally, after playing that hard point, um. Was that just kind of like an outlier and how you played so well in the next two maps? Or like generally, like, uh, are you just able to rebound like that? Because I know for me personally, early on, I, I couldn't. So I think it comes with experience. Like you said, like early on, that would throw me off the whole fucking time. Like I'd be like in my head. And it kind of depends on the people you're playing with. If you have pe teammates that are like your brothers or like good ass friends, yeah. you want to shine for them. So now you're going to, now you're pissed off after you just threw that map and you want to fucking smack these kids in their mouth. Like, that's how it was for me after that. After I lost, because we were all good friends on that team, and I was just like, fuck these kids. I'm shitting on them. Because I heard Ryan stand up and point at me. Ryan was pointing at me. And Strat, Mark Strat, he was on that team. He was pointing at me. Oh, my God. That pissed me off. And that's the one thing you we were... I think someone said something about trash talk. Like you said, you used to light up the room. People would yell at me, and then the next map, if we won, I was screaming. I was saying personals. I didn't care. I was coming at you like a McGregor effect. I was yelling... Getting in your face. Like, I miss that shit, bro. That shit is so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not sure, dude. I'm on land. Like energy like that is the most electric shit I've ever seen. Like mm -hmm. I'm so serious. Like I'm sure, Kobe. Do you ever go to land? I actually don't know. Have you ever nope. been on land? Nope. This guy's Damn, a liar. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so <laughs> you. Wow, that actually blows. Okay. Um. Only one here that's won anything on land. I hope you get uh, to go only to one to win on land here. Uh, well, I was I was gonna go to um fucking Asian <laughs> Charlotte. I was supposed to go to AG and Charlotte every February. And then um didn't go to that because one of our pro stupid. And then I was supposed to go to <laughs> What was the event that got canceled? Fair was stupid. Was that was that a AG and Indy that got canceled? The most With recent one. No, they hosted. They hosted. <laughs> yeah. That, so. they hosted yeah, that, yeah, so. yeah. There was kids playing uh, in the well, hotel room. I, I was gonna go to that, and then yeah, uh, gonna that. you would have got the Rona, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. I saw like five people tested positive afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bro. People were getting the Rona for going to a local. What the fuck? Yeah, bro. I don't I'm not even gonna talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I, w- I wanted to. I'm sorry. The new MW scene is junk. Uh, yeah, bro. I, it's so much different. What what things have you experienced personally, coming back or like at least trying to come back on oh. from when you really started, you know, peak performance time. So, it didn't matter what I played when I was younger. Mm-hmm. It could have been free aids. It could have been pubs. It could have been fucking rank play. Yeah. I was going 110% every time, and I was going. I was, I was trying to be the best. Now it's kind of like, I don't know if it's because I've been doing it for so long that I'm just like, eh. But then I see it in my, when, I, when I lose to somebody I shouldn't lose to, and I know I shouldn't lose to them, then that's when that 110% comes back. That's the one thing I've noticed lately with me is like, like before when I was going hard all the time, which is why I always say like, let's go. That's why lately I've been going hard in these like free eights and like money eights. It's because I want to get back to the, like, I'm going to play, I'm going to try to play the best I can. I'm not going to fucking slouch and just let my Twitter following or like my social media just outweigh my competitive, you know, like my, my competitive edge. Because like at the end of the day, we're all competitors here. We've all competed. And that's what makes us different from everyone else is like Colby was saying, he gets hard on himself. And I was going to, I was going to comment. That's the definition of a young competitor. Mm-hmm. You're still in that. You want, you're there, but you just, you try like. I think Sigma said it. You're trying to do too much when you only have... Just focus on you. Don't try to do too much to try to influence the game. It will happen naturally. And it comes naturally. Yeah. No, 100 I just went off topic, but I was going with the topic, and no, then I just you, literally threw it out. No, you're perfectly fine. I remembered what I was going to ask earlier, even though Liam kind of asked the same question that came to mind, but it was that performance anxiety that you feel, you know, that you had just let yourself down or let the team down. And you were saying that... You know, it takes you some time to get that uh, that hundred and ten percent to come back. Do you think that mm-hmm. you could possibly work on some kind of practice or like a routine that you do before you get on, or like as soon as you get on, or before you scrim or whatever that will get you into that optimal like hundred and ten phase? Like, would you go into a rank play game and purposefully get shit on or something along those lines? Like, what kind oh, of th- no. what, what kind of things come to mind when I when I suggest that to you? So, like, pre-performance, like, before, like, the big dance, or, like, if we're, like, playing a tournament, I'll warm up. Like, I'll warm up. Usually, when it's, like, a scrim day, I'll warm up during scrims. It's weird. I don't know why I do it. I think it's a complacency thing, to be honest with you. But I fuck myself, because I'm not a practice player. I, I hate... I mean, I, I know you're supposed to practice, but, like, I get bored. I don't know if it's anyone else, but I get bored during practice sometimes. Like, when it gets repetitive... I mean, practice is where you're supposed to try different yep. shit. Which... I don't know. I think it's again a complacency thing, but like when it comes like pregame, like I'll warm up, I'll get cracked out, like I'll get focused, I'll listen to some pump up music, I'll watch some cringy ass motivation video, like I, I'll be doing some weird shit, but it's like it works, it works. It's like a weird motivation, like pick yourself up and let's fucking do this. Mm-hmm. Like that's where the anxiety drops, the depression drops, all that mental shit drops, and I'm ready to go. That's awesome, bro. There's. There's such an under, I want to say, like, I don't really know how to put this, but, like, people really underestimate the importance of that, you know? I know personally. Oh, under, undervalue? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, like, yeah. you know, everybody gets their hype songs and stuff, but people need to get that ru- that ritual. Like, people need to realize the things that really burn them up, the things that get them fired up to play, and the things that get them in their optimal level, and they need to take advantage of that. Like the the uh-huh. self awareness really just it comes through, man. I, I keep trying to pound it, but like it, especially in Call of Duty, the personal awareness and knowing like how you play into your team and what you can benefit and your shortcomings, your strengths, and how you can lean into those. Like me personally, like I was saying with my ADHD, I kind of scatter thought or whatever. But you go into this hyper focus when you can focus. Hard to get into, but when you're into it, you're into it. And it's like mm-hmm. for me, I have to really get this certain routine down to get into that hyper focus beforehand so that yep. means for me personally i have to really enjoy the thing that i'm doing to go into that hyper focus so in order to really enjoy it for me it's like you know obviously turning the toy on like you have that natural passion inside of you to like okay like i wanted to turn that ps4 on today so obviously like i care enough about this game to play it but to really give it your 110 percent, like me personally i have to go back to like what i started on you know a lot of people say like when you're about to give up remember why you started but i i think about it like when i start why i started in the first place every time and one of the things i like it gets me fired up bro like i watched the first 
time I ever figured out what competitive Call of Duty was was a Fear Moho montage. I watched that Fear Moho oh, montage, yeah. and I'm like, bro, I am ready. Like, it's a Logic song, so like, obviously, Logic and Call of Duty together, and a montage. It was like MW3 clips. So I was like, bro, I am hype. I want to be like Moho. I want my own Logic montage. And from that point on, like, I'm frying. But it's like if I don't, you know, have that routine, that ritual, I just I don't care as much, and my performance lacks. So, what are some ways that I want to hear from all three of you? I know I just asked Kevy, but specifically from now on, what are you guys gonna to try to do to get into that peak ritual? I'm listening. That was a good lame. You gonna go first then? <laughs> uh, hey, answer, buddy. Hey, you know, my, you know, Kobe. I'll, I'll take one for the team. You know, because you, <laughs> you know you need I your time. Mine, you need I'm your time. Right. You're, You're on the big right. dance. All right, all right, all right, all right. go for it. Then go for it. Ooh, alarm. Right, so I'm not. I'm not a big. I'll go next. Person. I guess my my ritual is. Uh, I don't know why this works. But uh, historically, before like a tournament or in sports, like before a big game, like I'll tell my teammates, I'm like, don't talk to me. Give me five minutes on my own. I'm not even kidding you. I'll like stare at the ground. Sit That's on the, like, like I, I'll sit. <laughs> <laughs> Go bro, I will, bro, I will sit. Like I would, um, the way our locker room was, was there was like a big locker room section where it was open to everybody. And we had these like showers because it was just the old gym locker room. So when you like when you became a junior and senior, you can move into the shower. So you had your own, basically your own locker room. Not even kidding, dude. I would just sit there and I would just stare at the ground for like five minutes, just nothing. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no music. I'm, not, I'm really not doing anything, dude. I'm literally just staring at the ground. And uh, I started doing that before tournaments. And I don't know why, but it gets me really focused and like. Oh, bro, it's in, a. You know. Ready to go. You don't even it's realize it, but that's a, a meditation practice at its core, bro. You don't realize it, but it is. Things like that, yeah. too, they add up. You don't realize it. That, uh, it's that psychopath in me. So, uh, my ritual before, like, just like tournaments? Is that what you're just, asking? Just anything. Or, like, before, like, like, my day of practice? No, like, if, I mean, yeah, I guess if you have a big day coming, like, what you would do. All right, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll say two things, right? Like, my standard day of practice, right? What it will be. Um, I mean, I have my ritual of my eat. I have when I eat, what time I eat every single day. Oh, you know, when shit. I go to the gym every single day, I uh, make sure I get a certain amount of sleep, like drink water, this and this and that. So like, I'm, I'm really like uh, disciplined outside of COD and COD like just fits into the NP slots. Do you know what I mean? So like, I guess that's kind of for me, for me, what it is, I'll come on and warm up and then just do it for my team. It's, it sounds super simple, do you know what I mean? But that's kind of what it is at its core for practice. Um. I guess so. It's scrims, and then afterwards vods, and and then my own personal stuff, like more vods probably, because I I like that a lot. S and D stuff, do you know what I mean? That kind of uh, stuff. But for tournaments, bro, like I'd be doing the same shit as Colby, man. I'm telling you, when I have something in my mind, like my girl will be talking to me, and I'll just be like, like I'm I'm thinking, mm. like I'll just I tell her I'm thinking, I'm being, I'm I'm just straight up not kidding. I'll say I'm thinking. I t I do this to everybody, but my girl definitely experiences the most because like randomly I'll just like doze off and then she'll say something to me. I'll just be like I'm thinking because like something will be on my mind. And I can't I can't pay attention to anything else until I figure it out in my head because if that's bothering me, I'm gonna be like half paying attention to everything. So before events, like I'll literally mentally like go into lockdown mode, go through every hard point, go to every spawn. Where would I be? Where will they go? Right? And then I'll think to myself, okay, so I'm prepared for this event. I do bad. I don't care. I knew what I, I was doing the right things. Do you know what I mean? The only time I ever like I'm punching myself <clears throat> is if like I misplayed like a small like scenario like here and there where I came to an event unprepared that I cared about. Do you know what I mean? If I went into a hard point and I go, you know, 20 for 35, 20 and 35, but I made every single right play. It was just one of those maps, which didn't happen often. But if it happened, like it is what it was like. That's kind of like the mentality I had. And, and then I told myself, OK, after that first map, like it's like you know go big or go home like i gotta step up these next two two or three maps like i started like thinking like you know that's kind of how i prep myself like um i really need to focus in on the things on my mind i guess so. i really resonate with that and what you're saying is just being mentally prepared you know that plays a big part in it is knowing and having that confidence that you're you know of knowing where you stand you know i know for me personally i obviously struggle like i say all the time with performance anxiety and I compare myself to my teammates a lot of the time and I always think about it like, you know, I play Call of Duty completely different than my teammates do a lot of the time. And it's like obviously it's better or worse, you know, as you guys know. 
But like when we were playing CTF last night, for instance, obviously it's just passionate. But like somebody was telling me go around back bunker, and I was like, no, why the fuck would I do that? It's CTF. Like they were pulling the flag or whatever, and I went fire cut, and I got the rap, stopped, the, got a double kill, and like returned the flag. And everyone's like, bro, why'd you do that? I was like, hey, it worked. So it's like fair enough. So it's like you know having that confidence in myself and knowing where I stand personally helps me perform more. Versus like before, if I didn't know how well everyone around me was and how good the other team was i was just kind of going into it not knowing where i, I stood on the rankings i was like okay i'm better than xyz but two two three are better than me i'm like okay like i know that i'm not bottom the barrel but i'm also no i'm not the top so i know where i gotta go so does that affect any of you guys at all or do you guys just kind of look at it like everybody's in the same boat we're all swimming I'm kind of the same way like you on that. Like, if I see that I'm stacked on, but I know I'm better than these kids, that's where I just take, I try to take over the map and do what I got to do because I know this guy's going to, SpongeBob over here is going to get shit on. So, like, at that point, I'm just like, I'm just going to have to go to LeBron. Literally just take over a fucking map if I have to, but it doesn't always work out like that because, like you said, you could be that LeBron. Like, I think Sig, or I don't know if it was Sigmar you said, but if you're playing, like, say, the fucking Warriors back then when they played them, you're still going to, you mean you might not lose. I mean, you might not win. But you're going out fighting, and then you get picked on to a better... I mean, it's kind of a stat-hungry <clears throat> thing, but like at the same time, it gets you to that's that. That's just COD. Just COD, yeah, that, That's COD. Hmm. Oh, it, it, yeah. That's how the community is always going to be. It's not going to change. Dirt, like, dirty work players are never going to really get recognition. I mean, they do from the smart people, but like... The, the pro scene, they do. That's it. Yeah, the pro scene. Like, I'm talking like the pro players. Yeah. Like, nobody yeah. else. Like, ASIM... Oh, yeah. Pro players and top I hear ASIM yeah. getting so much recognition from the pros. They're like, this guy deserves to be on team. Why has this guy not got a slot? But all these organizations are like this guy's the worst kd like why would we pick this guy up like this guy's horrible he was on the worst team in the league yeah. like why would we play with asim but nobody minnesota was actually really good too minnesota was minnesota was, until shit hit south for them towards mid the end season they were up there top three grand yeah. finals a few times and there's those dirty work players man yeah like so crim you, no, my bad, my, keep going no, you're good you're, uh crim said the best is people now are just playing for spots and mm. money and oh yeah salaries that's all it is yeah it's kind of sad right, I mean, that, that passion's kind of lost do you think there's any way that we can kind of bring almost like i said that renaissance of the passion because when most of us started playing youtube was youtube gaming was just on another level you know black ops 2 videos were yeah. everywhere everything was just insane at that point so everybody really like just had so mm -hmm. much love for the game itself and obviously it's a different time period you know we're older now etc but do you think there is a way to bring back that kind of love for the game rather than like that love for just trying to win? Mm. Uh, I think COD's trying too hard. I think they're, they're trying way too hard for us to get to that again. Right now, they, they looked off their numbers from back in like 2013 and 14 when COD was starting. Like, COD was there, and then they just fucked it up. Like, I don't know what they did. They need to go back to their roots of just not trying so hard. And maybe because Fortnite hit it right. Hmm. Fortnite hit it right when it first dropped. I hate Fortnite. But I'll give them credit because they had that love. All those kids, they wanted to be the best fucking Fortnite player. They wanted to, they had YouTube videos. Twitch was Twitch is still popping on Fortnite. Hmm. Like it, it they hit it right because it was a free to play. It was very friendly to like it wasn't <clears throat> skill based matchmaking. Once they put speaking I'm no I'm going off topic here, but based on the S um the skill based matchmaking we just talked about. When Fortnite introduced skill-based matchmaking, what happened to their scene? Gone zone. Their scene went gone. Like that, that it, it, they got to go back to where their roots. The only way COD's gonna work. I mean, that's the only way. I mean, me personally, that's the only way I'm gonna find love for it again. I need more content. I need like these. I mean, I know there's a whole co the pandemic's going on, so the events don't really go like it's an online event. I mean, it's not as hype as it used to be, but like it's got. I, I mean, for me, like. I don't know. I guess it just has to go back to their roots. Like, you gotta want to play for something. Like, like in Black Ops Two, like it was the camos or I don't know, really the challenge. Like MW Two as well. Like the calling cards, the fucking emblems, like your camos, your quick scopes, or whatever the fuck we would do back then. Because it was, I'm sure everyone here's tried sniping. Maybe I don't know, but like it's the content and like the roots of the games. Like if the content creators don't like playing it. You ain't gonna really get much. Like we all had that YouTuber that brought us into it. Mine oh, yeah. was Scump and Nade Shot, which is cringy, but like Everybody, I love Scump. Yeah. Like, oh, same here, man. My yeah. shit was 
Phase rain, and then after that, I saw Scumpy, and then mm -hmm. the Nate shot. Um, so those three: Scumpy, Nate shot, and Phase rain. It was yeah. Fear Moho mm -hmm. and Spacely of all people. People don't know that, but Spacely was a big time what YouTuber, and I was one of Spacely's like biggest fans. And wow. when I went to UMG, I remember I got a flick with them. I I was DMing him. I was like, "Yo, Space, when you coming down?" He's like, "Hold on, bro, I'm in the elevator right now." I was like, "Let's go!" And I got a flick with them. I thought I was so tough. He followed me, and I took it to my grave. I was like, "Spacely." Now look right, at him, like, where is, where is he? Where is he now? I want him on here, but, like... <laughs> He's hanging out. Yeah, uh, I think he lives in North Carolina now. He? He's, like, by me. Oh, that's where. Yeah, he moved out of New York. A lot of people moved out of that area. Yeah, no. Sure. They're sick of it. Yeah, man. So, I, I think now, you know, we're at the hour and two-minute mark. If Colby wants to wrap it up with round 11, as usual. All right. So... And going back to what I think, I think I think some the lines of this, but uh, it kind of gone through like you had talked about that one Black Ops Three event, um, where like the game was on you. So I was curious, what were what was your like low Call of Duty, and what was your high of Call of Duty? If that kind of makes sense, like what was like your all time like favorite match, and your like most like I guess you could say degrading match. Okay, um. Uh, let me think here, cause it's been a while. It's been a long ride, boys. It's been a long ride. Um, let's think. I don't want to say AW, cause that was my first land event. I'm gonna say we're gonna say BO3 was my highs. Was like beating, like we would take maps off resent or like having people like we were, we were like the people's champs, kind of like like. You were, we were, you were we the were underdog good, favorite, we, like we were the underdog favorite that everyone yeah. loved, and that was that was the highest. Like having everyone like dab me up and be friends, and like the memories and the good times at events. Those are the highs for me. The lows lately have been like coming back when I took that break because World War Two is when I actually really took a break. Cause I had a lot of shit going on that year, and uh, those were the lows. Those were the I got suspended off Twitter for saying shit that I shouldn't say. I was hanging. Let's just put it in perspective. I was hanging out with non-vicious, so let's just throw that out there. My my mental intoxicity was the lowest it could ever be. That's probably my lows because like I would go to events. Yeah, that was I got I got a I got a lot that Damn. year. That was a bad year. Damn. Like that fucked me a lot. Like that killed my stock a lot. You can always bounce back. You know the market goes back up after it goes down. It does, but like the new scene is just yeah. disrespectful. Like, I think Sigma was saying on the last one or something, but like, I'm not gonna even say names, but like, some of these young guns, they have egos like they won fucking 10 events, and I don't know, they get T64, and I guess they're satisfied with it. I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it out there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and end I'm just it. Gonna throw the nail biters. <laughs> you gave me 5-5, five, five, there you go. I got a piss. All Holy right, shit. man. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, we're gonna Thanks. make sure everybody checks this stuff down in the description below his at is obviously on screen those are l's obviously i had to make it an l not an i so you guys can find mr kevy thank you again kevy so much for coming on have a great rest of your day and i can't wait to see it in the beta in a couple minutes oh yeah we're, we're about to be playing in about a few minutes right, sorry well. i wasn't as funny as you guys wanted but i tried hey man <laughs> hey man it was a great time some good moments i like this podcast that appreciate boys. it boys appreciate it